Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler. I am the host and the founder of the Order of Men podcast and movement. Welcome here. I know there's a lot of new uh, members, a lot of new men and maybe women as well joining us, tuning in for the first time. Maybe you heard this from a friend or a relative or a colleague or a coworker uh, about what we're doing here. If you are new, my goal is to help reclaim and restore masculinity in this society that seems to be, I was gonna, it's not even seems to be, that is, is, is increasingly dismissive and divisive and flat out rejects what masculinity is. A lot of people will say it's a social construct. It's not. It's a biological construct. It's supported societally for good reason. It works. And it really isn't until the relative ease of modernity have we even been able to have the luxury of calling into question what it means to be a man. Everybody knows what it means to be a man. Marcus Aurelius said thousands of years ago, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, but let's not spend any more time debating what a good man should be and instead just be it. So you know what it means to be a good man. And it's my job to equip you with the tools and conversations and resources to do just that. And this conversation that we're going to have today is no different. We're going to talk about the single greatest factor that you can utilize and use in your life to produce success on the home front, the business front, the societal and cultural front, the battle front, wherever it is you are showing up as a man. So we're going to get into that in just a minute before I do just want to make a very, very quick mention of my friends over at Origin and also Jocko Fuels, which is a, a division of Origin. They're doing incredible things, 100% made and sourced in America, products, goods, services, uh, health supplements with their Jocko Fuel and their Joint Warfare and their Jocko Greens. Uh, they're also making denim and boots and rash guards and gis and belts and they're going to be bringing on their, their winter collection here soon, which is the heavy hoodie, which I'm going to need here in Maine as it starts to cool off. Already it has been. So guys, they're doing incredible things. They just uh, wrapped up a deal on a new facility in North Carolina. So uh, it's pretty exciting what they're doing. If you want to support a company that's doing great things and making goods and services and products in United States of America, then check out Origin Main and or Jocko Fuels, originmain.com or jockofuels.com. And regardless of what you end up doing, make sure you use the code order at originmain.com or jockofuels.com because when you use the code order, you're going to get a 10% discount when you do. All right. Support America, support my friends, neighbors, colleagues, and, uh, Get some good products in the meantime. All right, guys, let's talk about what I wanted to talk with you about today. The single greatest factor for success on any front of your life is very simply this. And we hit on this on Wednesday's Ask Me Anything. So if you're not subscribed to the show, make sure you subscribe so you don't ever miss an Ask Me Anything, an interview, or this Friday Field Notes. And what I said is that the single greatest factor to success on any front is simply this, presence. That's it, guys. Presence, period, the end. Let's call it a day. Let's wrap things up. Good to go, ready to go. Guys, you need to be present in every engagement, in every conversation, in every opportunity, in every moment. We spend a lot of time thinking about the future. Some of that is good. We spend a lot of time thinking about the past. Some of that is good. But if it comes at the expense of us being present in any given moment, any given circumstance, then we're leaving it on the table. We're not being as effective as we could be. We're not producing as well as we could. We're not excelling. We're not serving other people because we're so worried and focused on what's happening down the road, things that haven't happened yet, or we're worried about the past, things that have already happened. And again, it comes at the expense of what's happening now which is where you have control. You have no control over what happens in the future. You can influence it, of course, but you have no control over it. You have no control over what has already happened. You can't even influence that. What's done is done. Let's talk about being present in the moment as the single greatest factor to success in your life. Now, I've interviewed, I want to say, close to 350 incredibly successful men, warriors, scholars, athletes, New York Times bestselling authors, medical professionals, 
experts on different facets of life. And I'll tell you, every single one of them is extremely present. They aren't engaged in a bunch of, you know, what, what if, and what could be, they aren't engaged in a a bunch of what has been, they're engaged in what is happening right now. So let me break this down for you, because as I was thinking about what I wanted to address today on this Friday field notes, I identified five key elements of being present in the moment and how it can serve you effectively. Number one, it requires focus. Now, if you think about popular culture and society, you are all over the place. You are scrambling. It's chaotic. You receive thousands, if not tens or hundreds of thousands of messages trying to get you to click here, buy here, subscribe there, do this, do that. I'm not... I'm not out of that equation either. I'm trying to tell you to subscribe to the Order Man podcast. I'm trying to get you to listen to it. Some of it's going to serve you well, but guys, your your ability to focus is greatly diminished relative to what it was 100 years ago or 500 or 1,000 or 10,000 years ago because there's so much stimulus at any given time. I could jump on this little device and I can get entertainment, whatever my entertainment is. If it's mindless information, if it's looking at beautiful women on Instagram, uh, if it's getting lost in professional sporting events, whatever my thing is, it's all right here in the palm of my hand. And as much as that's a beautiful thing because it helps me do what I want to do, it also can become a deterrent to your ability to stay present and your ability to succeed in your life. You need to learn how to focus, which means that you need to be able to be present with yourself. You need to learn how to operate without listening or or hearing or looking at something, anything, and you need to be calm and focused and in the moment. We can exercise this, but only if we're deliberate about it. So what I would suggest to those of you who struggle with focus is that you learn to create systems and processes that eliminate the distractions, the bright and shiny object that happens to come up every single minute every single hour of every single day? What systems do you have in place? What tactics and strategies have you employed to ensure that you're focused on the present moment? And if you catch yourself slipping, you catch yourself getting distracted, you aren't weak, you aren't cowardly, you aren't pathetic, you aren't a loser, just catch yourself and realize that something's got to change. For me, it happens to be this device. I've got people texting me and emailing me and messaging me and liking things on social media and debating with me on things and podcast requests being accepted and being declined and emails and this and that and business inquiries and everything else. And sometimes I just need to shut the damn thing off so that I can focus on doing a podcast today with you, or I could focus on being at the lake and fishing with my son, or I could watch my daughter's dance recital, or I could be at jujitsu or I could be engaged in uh, building the canoe or any of the number of things that I think and have identified as being important. Come up with the systems and processes. But the first step to being present 100% in the moment is not only learning to focus, but eliminating the distractions. Number two, curiosity. Guys, if you're curious about life and you come with a, a desire to learn and to grow and what makes people tick and why do they think the way they think and what what causes them to behave this way over that way and vice versa, then you're going to naturally be uh, able to move into things that are interesting. You know, again, I've had so many people on the podcast and I'll tell you when the thing turned for me with the podcast and it became a very fulfilling uh, process for me is when I became more curious. I wasn't so much concerned with what questions I wanted to ask or what I wanted to extract from them as much as it became an an objective to learn, to expand, to understand, to be curious. And some of you guys will say, Ryan, you're a great interviewer. You ask great questions. And I hope that's the case. I'm trying to develop that skill, but I tell you, it's curiosity. I genuinely care about what makes these men tick. I genuinely care about what makes them successful. I genuinely am interested in their uh, perception of current events and growth and success and failure and setbacks and victories and all of the stuff that comes with life. I'm genuinely curious about that. And because I'm curious about that, I'm totally 
hyper-focused and engaged in the conversation that's taking place. Because I'll tell you, if I wasn't curious, I'd be thinking about what's for dinner or what my wife wants to do tonight or what challenges my children are facing. And there's times where that's appropriate, but not always. And so I've learned to be present in the moment. I've learned to focus on the things that are important at any given moment. And I've learned to be very curious about, and that's a learned skill, by the way, by the way, being curious, you can develop that. And I am curious. And I try to look at what people do through the lens of the things that are important to me. And that makes me a curious person, which also, by the way, makes me an interesting person. So if you want to connect with people more deeply, stop worrying so much about what you want to portray to them and start figuring out what it is they want to share with you. And you will instantaneously, this is a little bonus for you, you will instantaneously become a more compelling, interesting, and influential person. Number three, humility. This is one I struggle with. When I share topics like this, I'm sharing it for you just as much as I am anybody else. I am the greatest beneficiary and recipient of the work that we're doing here. And guys, I will tell you first and foremost, I struggle with humility. I'm prideful. I'm arrogant at times. My ego gets in the way. And this is all at odds with my ability to be humble which also leads me to new information, new ideas, new concepts, things that will ultimately improve my life. If you act like you know it all and there's nothing you can learn and there's nothing anybody can teach you, then you have stunted your growth. Artificially, by the way, you have put up a wall in place that says, I can't get better. I can't improve. I don't have the desire to. And so even if great information comes your way, you won't even listen to it. You won't acknowledge it. You won't recognize it because you think you already know everything. And I do at times. And there's certain activities that I've decided to participate in over the past several years, this podcast, jujitsu, other aspects of my life, developing new hobbies and skills and interests where humility has been thrust and forced upon me, which is good in a lot of ways, because if it wasn't, my default mode is I'm good. I'm special. I know everything. There's nothing else you can teach me. And that is flat out wrong. So if you want to be present in the moment, again, focus, curiosity. And that third point I just made is be humble, be open to learning and growth and progress and expansion. And uh, if you are, life's going to be more exciting. All right, next, mastery. Guys, the amount of nihilism in popular society is disturbing. And people don't seem to care about as much anymore. They care about themselves. They care about their emotions. They care about their ego. They care about their success. But there's a level of nihilism that I think we're experiencing unlike any other experience or point in life. And, and people aren't, they just don't care. And there's things you shouldn't care about, by the way. Like I can't care about everything. But there's also things that I very deeply care about, that I am the antithesis of nihilistic about, that are so important and significant to me that I want to become the best. And why would you ever engage in something if you didn't want to become the best? Now, let me throw this disclaimer out here. Best is subjective, right? So you might say, well, Ryan, what, what, deter what makes you be the determinant of, of what success is? It's not. I just know what it is for me. It's not always money. Sometimes it is. It's not always reach. Sometimes it is. It's not always being present and engaged with my family. Sometimes it is, but it changes and it's going to be different for you than it is for me. So I'm not going to tell you what success is. In fact, let me tell you this about success. Success is autonomy, period. Bottom line. That's the only answer to that question. If anybody ever gives you a different answer to that question, they're wrong. Because how can I determine success for you? How can you determine success for me? You can't. But autonomy, autonomy is the ability to do what you want, when you want, why you want, where you want, without any input or permission from other people. And isn't that success? If you want to be a, a Buddhist monk and you have the ability to go do that then and, and you do it successfully, then you're successful. That isn't the path for me and that isn't the path for a lot of our listeners. But that individual is successful. What right do I have to say he's not? The path to success for me is growing a business and a movement to the degree that I can impact millions and millions of men who will impact their families and also simultaneously be able to lead my family effectively. 
And if I can't do any one of those things, then I'm not a success. Now, it's successful now because we're meeting that. We're reaching that objective. That may be the right path for you, and it may not, but I can't determine that for you. You can't determine it for me. But what it is required is the desire to be a master, to be masterful. When I do this podcast, I want it to be the best podcast. I want to have the best studio. I want to have the best sounding microphone. I want to make sure that my grooming is on point and it's taken care of based on the message that I want to share with you, that the topics are relevant, that I'm a great conversationalist. So you actually want to listen, that I have the ability to ask great questions. I'm pouring over the details of this stuff. And because I'm pouring over the details, I'm very present in the moment. I don't have a lot of time to be distracted with the, the, all the other bull crap that comes up with life because I'm like, no, I want to be at the best at this. So is that going to help me do this? No, I don't want it. Yes. Cool. Let's talk about it. Mastery. It's really, really pathetic and saddening in society today when we look at products that are just cheaply made systems that haven't been thought out conversations that aren't articulated. Well, these aren't masters. They're just consumers and they're just throwing a bunch of crap on the wall and seeing what sticks. So people will buy it and consume it. And to me, that is not a sustaining way of life. And it doesn't lead to you being present, which ultimately leads to your, your intended success and results. And guys, the last thing I want to share with you here, and this is very, and very important because everybody has an opinion. Everybody has insight. Everybody has ideas and concepts and things that they think are important. But here's what I'm going to tell you is your ability to be as objective as possible is crucial. We all have biases. We all have opinions. We all have lenses in which we view life. And that's good. We should have that. I'm not telling you not to. Your experiences create your reality and how you respond to the situation in front of you. But guys, let's, let's work on our objectivity. You know, Maybe that person who you would normally interpret as being a dick or coming after you really isn't, but they're just sharing an alternative perspective. Maybe the person that you disagree with isn't an idiot and instead might have something insightful to share, even if it's just a little fragment of what that individual shared with you and there's something that you can learn there. There's a book that we're studying next month in the Iron Council called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz, I believe. I'm drawing a blank right now. Is that right? I believe that's right. Don Miguel Ruiz. Uh, and it's called The Four Agreements. And one of his agreements is, and I'm paraphrasing, but not to take anything personally. What if you did that? What if your boss gave you a critique about your work performance over the past quarter, over the past year? And instead of getting defensive and letting the ego get in the way, you just looked at it objectively and tried to strip the personal opinions out of it and the emotions and feelings and said, you know, is this right? Is this accurate? Is there something to be learned from this? I don't like when people challenge me necessarily. That's not an easy thing for people to do. And some people say, well, I love challenge. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You might, you might embrace it. You might have put a healthy spin on it, but come on, nobody likes to be challenged. And yet we need to learn to be challenged and we need to learn to look at things, whether it's feedback or about our own performance, the way that we look or the way that we show up or the things that we're doing. And we need to look at that objectively. Here's a great way to do that. If that advice was, instead of being given to you, was given to a neighbor, would it be accurate? Would you interpret it as accurate? That's a great exercise. If instead of this guy challenging me, if he was challenging Joe over there, whose side would I be on? Maybe you'd be on the side of the guy who's critiquing you. And it's your own personal emotions and baggage getting in the way of progress and expansion and growth and presence and ultimate success. Let's not take things personally. Even if they're intended to be personal. I mean, you're going to make stuff up about the way that things are intended. And we don't know because we're assuming we're filling in the blanks. So we don't know. So we're going to make up a bunch of stuff about the way things are intended. Well, let's just assume if we're going to make stuff up, let's just assume that people are, are good hearted and that they want to serve us. And that maybe in spite of their delivery method, inadequate delivery method, that they have things that might be valuable to listen to. This requires a lot of humility and it's not easy. Of course, it's simple, it's very simple. It's not easy. But if you want success in your life, this is what you'll do. 
And again, after interviewing over 350 very, very successful men, I can tell you that every single one of them is present to what they're doing, is present towards their mission. They're focused, hyper-focused on what they want, sometimes to the extreme, even obsessive, but they're hyper-focused on what they want to do. They're very curious about what makes other individuals tick, how they can succeed at a greater level. They're humble. They're open and receptive to new information and new learning. They ask great questions because they're curious about growth. They want to be masterful. They're focused on the concept of mastery. They want to improve. They want to get better. They want to be the best. You know, you think about my podcast I did with Tim Grover uh, a month and a half or so ago. And if you don't know who he is, uh, he's got the book uh, Relentless and Winning. And I think a couple others. He uh, personally coached Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and uh, I believe Dwayne Wade and some of these other incredible athletes uh, at the pinnacle of their game. And you know, he, he, he talks about these guys wanting to be masterful and, and thrusting themselves into everything they could to, to accomplish that. And number five is being objective. Your emotions, your baggage, your lens is clouding your judgment. And I'm not pointing as much fingers as I am at you as I am at me too. My emotions, my baggage, my lens is clouding my judgment. And I need to learn to be as objective as possible by engaging in a couple of different exercises one of which I said to you was to assume that somebody was giving advice to somebody else. And what would you think about that advice if they were giving it to somebody else? Because that will take some of your baggage out of the way. And by the way, there's, there's another feature. There's another opportunity here. And that is to get around other men who can help you with that. They can help you focus. They can ask you great questions about your curiosity. They can help humble you through their great questions and their challenges. Uh, they can challenge you to be masterful to improve a skill set skill set and they can uh, help you with the objectivity as well by challenging you and asking you questions and really causing you to do a deep dive into who you are and that resource that we have available is called the iron council it's our exclusive brotherhood there's almost 900 members of our iron council right now and if you want to join us and participate in the brotherhood the camaraderie the network and the accountability that comes with it then the Iron Council is a great resource for you, which you can learn more at orderaman.com slash Iron Council. Guys, ultimately, I want you to be present. I want you to succeed. I know presence is what it takes. Whenever I've succeeded in my life, it's because I've been present in the moment. Whenever I've failed, it's because I've been distracted and tempted to engage in something else that isn't going to serve me and the people I care about well. So focus, curiosity, humility, mastery, objectivity are your path to presence, which is your path to success. Try it out. Let me know how it's going. Join us in the Iron Council, orderman.com slash Iron Council. Connect with me on the socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at Ryan Mickler, M-I-C-H-L-E-R. Let's keep the conversations going. Gentlemen, we'll be back next week. Until then, go out there, take action, be present, and become the man you are meant to be.